So we've now seen what the determinant of an n by n matrix is, and we've seen how to calculate it. Um, I want to prove some more nice properties that determinants have. Um, so remember, very early on, we said that if you have a 2 by 2 matrix A, B, C, D, it's invertible if and only if its determinant A, D minus B, C is non-zero. So we want the analogue of this for n by n matrices. So A is invertible for n by n matrix. If and only if debt A is not zero. That's one property we're going to prove. The other property we're going to prove is if I have two matrices A and B and I take the determinant of the product I get the product of the de determinants so that's a, a very nice fact makes the determinants a really powerful tool so let's call these theorems 1 and 2 and let's prove theorem one first. Um, so first we recall that a matrix A is invertible if and only if its reduced echelon form is the identity matrix. Okay so this is what we're going to use. Now if the reduced echelon form is the identity matrix then what do we get? Well to get to the reduced echelon form we used some row operations. So to get from A to the reduced echelon form we used row operations And what we've seen is, if we do type 1 row operations, the determinant is unchanged. If we do type 2 row operations, the determinant gets rescaled. But it gets rescaled by you know, whatever we're using to do the type 2 row operation. You can't rescale by 0, so rescaled by a non-zero factor and type 3 row, row operations in other words swapping rows uh, debt changes sign so this tells us that debt of A um, if is non-zero if and only if debt of the reduced echelon form of A is non-zero. Right, because these two guys are related by uh, row operations, each of which cannot change the determinant from a non-zero number to a zero number. It can rescale it by something non-zero, it can change the sign, but it can't make it zero. So we've seen A is invertible if and only if the reduced echelon form is the identity. That says if A is invertible then debt A um, is a positive or non-zero, let's say non-zero multiple of debt of the identity and debt of the identity is 1. So being a non-zero multiple of 1 means you're non-zero. So if you're invertible your determinant is not zero. The other direction if the determinant is non-zero then you're invertible well it's similar so um, if A is not invertible 
then its reduced echelon form is not the identity and that means it has to have a row of zeros. Otherwise, um, for you know, if all the leading entries are moving to the right, and there are n of them, then you'd get exactly one in every uh, one in every column, one in every row. So they'd have to live along the diagonal, and you get the identity matrix. So one of the rows has to just com consist of zeros if you're not having. Uh, reduced echelon form being the identity. Um, but then det a is a a non-zero it, well it's a multiple of det of the reduced echelon form which is then zero. Because if we have a row of zeros then whatever entry we pick from that row it's going to be zero so all the terms in the determinant will vanish. So if A is invertible, the determinant is non-zero. If A is not invertible, then the determinant is zero. So this shows that the determinant really plays exactly the same role um, for n by n matrices as it did for 2 by 2 matrices. What about theorem 2? That the determinant is multiplicative, so det a b is det a det b. So proof of two. So we first prove this formula in the case where a is an elementary matrix. This is what we're trying to prove. So if a is e i j lambda which if you remember is the thing with ones on the diagonal and a lambda in the i j position zeros everywhere else then well what we're going to do is we're going to compute both sides and check they're the same so det a b is i claim this is equal to det b because AB is obtained from B by doing a row operation of type 1. This is row I gets replaced by row I plus lambda row J. Right, remember this is the point of the elementary matrices. If you multiply on the left by EIJ lambda, that has the effect of doing this row operation. And we've checked uh, in a couple of videos ago that if you do this row operation, then you don't change the determinant. On the other hand, det A, the determinant of this elementary matrix, is just the product of the diagonal entries, so that's 1. So det A, det B is also equal to det B. So just by computing both sides of this equation, we see that the equation holds if A is an elementary matrix. Um, what about for type 2 elementary matrices? So if A is E i lambda, then det A B is lambda det b. This is because b, uh, sorry, a b is obtained from b by doing a, the row operation r i goes to lambda r i, which we saw changes the determinant by a factor of lambda. And on the other hand, det a Right, this matrix, remember, is the thing with 1s on the diagonal everywhere except 
I I where it's lambda and the determinant of that is just the product of the diagonal entries which is lambda so det a det b is lambda det b so again by comparing both sides we see that they're equal so this proves the formula det a b equals det a det b in the case where a is an elementary matrix by induction we see that det a b equals det a det b whenever a is a product of elementary matrices right so just applying this same argument and pulling off each elementary matrix at a time we get this, this formula <coughs> when a is a product of elementary matrices and remember from our earlier work on invertible matrices this is true if and only if a is invertible so we've proved our formula for any invertible matrix a if a is not invertible then det a is zero by theorem one that we saw just now so we need to prove in this case that det a b is zero as in it's zero times det b and this is equivalent to showing that a b is not invertible But suppose A, B were invertible, then you could write down its inverse and you could form the product B, A, B inverse. Right, so right, we, we can write down the inverse of the matrix A, B and we can write B times that. And this is now an inverse for A because A B A B inverse is A B A B inverse and that's um, equal to the identity. And that contradicts the assumption that A is not invertible. So that's the symbol for a contradiction. Okay, so it's a slightly odd proof. We work case by case. First we deal with the case where A is an elementary matrix. Then with the case where A is a product of elementary matrices. In other words, when A is invertible. And then we say, well, what happens if A is not invertible? And we prove by contradiction that in that case det a b has to be zero because a b can't be invertible so again the formula holds and again we're just checking the formula by computing both sides and showing they're equal so you may not yet appreciate why this formula is so great but i really like this formula um, and i'm sure you will come to like this formula more and more as you do more maths um, I mean the point is this debt is given by an incredibly complicated formula right this is sum over permutations of products of things with random signs everywhere and yet it behaves so nicely with respect to mul matrix multiplication it's kind of incredible <laughs>